Fire Emblem Engage has just released, and I had a ton of fun with my first playthrough. I'll be discussing more maps and mechanics from it once I get a completed Maddening run under my belt, but in this video I'm going to talk about the game's hub, the Somniel, and other hub worlds in the Fire Emblem franchise. To begin with, I want to define what a hub is. To me, a hub is functionally a more immersive menu. There's less focus on core gameplay in a hub, rather the goal is to allow the player to get to the core gameplay and do upkeep related to the core gameplay in a more organic way than a typical menu. Think something like Delfino Plaza in Mario Sunshine. There's a little gameplay here, but its main purpose is to get you from level to level in a manner that's a little more organic and a little more fun than a level select menu. In Fire Emblem, a hub usually also includes shops and the ability to talk to your units. There are a few reasons why a game might use a hub. One is when traversal itself is a fun part of the game. Going back to Mario Sunshine, moving, jumping, and using Flood is fun. So running between levels in Delfino Plaza is more fun than selecting a level from a menu. Another reason a game might use a hub is that hubs can be used to show how the player's actions are impacting the world. In a lot of level-based games where you're going from new location to new location, players may not get an opportunity to see how their actions are impacting the world. A hub solves this by providing a constant location that players will visit a lot, where they can observe how it changes over the course of the game. These locations also often include NPCs that can develop as the game goes on and provide flavor for a playthrough. The downside of using a hub is that it's pretty much always less efficient than just using a menu. Running around a hub is always going to take a little longer than just selecting a menu item would. This isn't a problem if the hub is fun, or if it doesn't take too long to traverse, but if you have to spend a lot of time in the hub, or if the hub is boring, then it can start to feel like a time-consuming annoyance that's keeping you from getting to the core gameplay, rather than a fun thing to do in between levels. Fire Emblem hasn't done hubs for most of its history, opting instead to develop the world through things like story, supports, and base conversations. This makes sense since Fire Emblem's gameplay isn't really about traversal. Like, it's fun to move around in a Mario hub world, but in Fire Emblem, it's a grid-based game, so it doesn't translate as well to a hub where you need to be able to move around more freely. In recent Fire Emblem games, though, hubs have been something that have been included more and more. Perhaps the most well-known hub in Fire Emblem is the Garigmok Monastery in Fire Emblem Three Houses. The monastery is where you spend most of your time between battles, and there's a lot to do there. You can talk to characters and see what they think of recent events in the story, share a meal with your favorite students, garden, fish, sing in a choir, fight in tournaments, have tea parties. You get the idea, there's a lot of stuff. During my first playthrough of Three Houses, I loved the monastery. I loved reading each character's unique dialogue each month, seeing how units react to sharing meals with each other, and figuring out the right conversation topics during tea parties. These were legitimately fun little things to do when the game was still fresh and all of this was new to me. And it helps you get a feel for what each character is about and decide which characters you want to recruit that don't start in your house. This is the biggest strength of the monastery. It advances the world building of three houses and it gives you an opportunity to get to know characters that haven't been recruited yet. It even allows for non-recruitable characters like the gatekeeper who add charm and make the world feel like it consists of more than just your army and the enemies you're fighting against. However, towards the end of the game and in all subsequent playthroughs, the monastery gets to feel like a chore. On replays of Three Houses, the novelty of the monastery is gone as you've seen most of the dialogue, but you're still incentivized to spend a lot of time in the monastery to increase the motivation of your students, tend to your garden for stat boosters, get training from any professors that can teach you a useful skill, and fight in the tournaments for their rewards. All of these activities have significant tangible benefits, and a playthrough that ignores them will have a harder time. In a vacuum, none of the monastery activities take much time, but the monastery is large, so traveling from activity to activity often involves walking a long distance, fast traveling and sitting through a loading screen, or both. Plus, in a lot of months you'll be doing monastery tasks three to four times per chapter. This can add up to around 30 minutes of repeating the same activities over and over before you get back to the core gameplay. Over the course of an entire playthrough, this can add up to hours of performing what is essentially busy work just to get to the next chapter. It really hurts the pacing at times. The monastery also has some minor negative effects on the story in the second part of the game. In the first half of Three Houses, you spend time at the monastery between monthly missions. This makes sense because your students have a regular schedule and this is where you all live. It only feels natural to spend time with your students and have a specific schedule. 
During part two though, battles take place all over Fodlon, but always conveniently four weeks apart at the end of every month, and you're always able to get right back to the monastery, all of which can feel a little contrived. It's not like this ruins the story, but it is a contrivance that is necessitated by having a hub in an established location like Three Houses does. So, my first takeaway from the monastery in Three Houses was that hub worlds could make you feel a lot more present in the world. Small but meaningful conversations each chapter can help you see how a character reacts to events in the story in a way that longer support conversations can't since developers never know when you will trigger a support. So having these timely conversations is a great way to see how characters fit into the world that they're in. However, my other takeaway is that the charm of this unique dialogue disappears in subsequent playthroughs. So if a hub contains a lot of cool dialogue and a lot of busy work, it's just going to feel like busy work on every playthrough after the first, once you've seen all the cool dialogue. The monastery is important to Three Houses for the character building it provides, but if I were redesigning it, I would reduce it to a once a month activity and change each task in the monastery so that you don't have to do things like eat six meals per week. I would also have made it more condensed. These changes would make the monastery feel a lot better and take a lot less time without sacrificing the fun conversations. I feel confident in saying this because the next hub in the series basically made those changes. Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes features a base camp that fills a similar role to the monastery, with the notable exception that you only stop here once between battles instead of up to four times. This alone is a major improvement, but the tedium is reduced in other places as well. For instance, sharing meals is still an activity in Three Hopes, but you only have to do it once per battle instead of multiple times. Additionally, the base camp in Three Hopes is considerably smaller than the monastery in Three Houses. It's not a long walk to get anywhere in the base camp, and you can even still fast travel if you're feeling a little lazy. But the key with everything being walkable is that you never have to hit a loading screen. Just talking to every character in the Three Houses monastery will involve hitting at least a couple loading screens and sometimes more. The smaller space and quicker activities in Three Hopes War Camp makes it much less time consuming compared to the monastery in Three Houses, so you can get in, have a little chat with all of your units, and get on to the next battle. Almost every issue with the monastery is resolved in Three Hopes, but it still keeps most of the positive aspects from the monastery. We've only had one more hub since Three Hopes, the Somniel in Fire Emblem Engage. The Somniel resolves many of the issues the Monastery had, but it still has a few of the more frustrating aspects and introduces a new issue of its own. The Somniel solves the issue of having repetitive chores by lessening the rewards from them. In Three Houses, I felt compelled to eat all the meals and do all of the tasks as they majorly contribute to characters growing, learning skills, and getting into the classes that I wanted. On the other hand, the more annoying tasks in the Somniel, such as the exercise minigames, aren't that rewarding, and the rewards are often temporary. For example, because there are no permanent rewards from it, I don't feel compelled to do the button-mashing sit-up minigame for two minutes in exchange for two extra HP on the next map. Basically, the Somniel has a lot of chores and activities that you can do, but many of them feel optional and I feel totally comfortable skipping them. So they're just there for people that want them. The main things I feel compelled to do at the Somniel are picking up the crafting materials my dogs find, fighting in the arena for extra experience, and polishing up my rings for a little extra bond experience. The problem is that despite this only being a few tasks, you still have to go through a pair of the only loading screens on the entire Somniel to get to them. Additionally, once you have more than a couple rings, shining them can actually become pretty tedious. Additionally, the Somniel is the only place where you can spend bond points to increase bond levels, and also the only place where you can inherit skills from emblem rings. Actually, doing so is much more time-consuming than it needs to be. If you want to spend bond points to increase bond experience with a character, you do this in the arena and you have to do it in increments of 5 levels, each time watching a battle animation play out. It doesn't actually matter who wins the battle, so this is purely a time waster. It's kind of fun watching the emblems fight the first time, but this can happen in the normal arena too, so you would still see it even if bond leveling were just a menu item. Once you're done grinding your bond experience in the arena, you'll have to inherit skills in the ring room. So you'll often be bouncing between these two locations, sitting through a load screen each time. This might not sound like such a big deal, but the problem is that bond leveling and inheritance could easily be handled by a menu with no load time, and we would be measuring the time it takes to grind bond ranks and inherit skills in seconds instead of minutes. Despite some of the tasks in the Somniel being time-consuming, it's still considerably faster than the Monastery, 
especially when you consider that you only have to do Somniel tasks once per chapter, and it being more tightly packed makes it a lot quicker if you want to talk to people or pick up items. There's just one problem with the Somniel, which is that it loses most of the character and world building aspects that the monastery had. Characters have much less to say in the Somniel, and they react to the story in meaningful ways pretty infrequently. So the Somniel inherits many of the problems from the monastery, in that it's not fun to traverse and it's still time consuming, but on top of that you barely even get the fun character development that we got in the monastery. It's still kind of fun to see your characters chilling by the pool or relaxing by the flea market in their casual outfits, and Sami is very cute, but I can't help feeling that almost everything in the Somniel could have just been a menu, and it feels like the only reason this game even has a hub is because Three Houses had one. For all of its flaws, the monastery in Three Houses served an important purpose. It was there to help you get to know characters so you can decide who you want to recruit, and help you immerse yourself in the world a little bit. In my first playthrough of Three Houses, I was always talking to each character in the monastery to see their reaction to current events. There are legitimately emotional, meaningful lines that you get only in the monastery. In the Somniel, characters just rarely have much to say beyond a single throwaway line. With supports being harder to get and engage, it makes it difficult to get to know units that aren't active members of your team. The Somniel improves on the monastery in that it's less of a pain and it's less time consuming, but it loses its sense of purpose without totally eradicating the problems that the monastery had. It's a lot less tedious and time consuming, but it's still significantly more tedious than just using a menu. I've spent an unreasonable amount of time already hopping between the arena and the ring room when these very easily could have just been menus, and the pared down dialogue compared to the monastery makes the time spent in the Somniel feel hollow instead of valuable. If the Somniel wanted to be a pared down hub that's just there for players that want it but skippable for those who don't, they should have gone with something more like Fates' My Castle. My Castle provided opportunities to talk to some of your units, and the dialogue here is pretty similar to what we get in Engage. The difference is that in My Castle, there's no loading and minimal chores. It's very quick and you're right on to the next chapter. You can even add some personality to it by customizing where your buildings are. For players that aren't really interested in the hub though, you can get done everything you need to do in my castle in just a minute or two. It's also worth noting that it's totally possible to add world building and characterization without hubs. Engage could have had something like base conversations from the Tellius games, which would have been way less time consuming and wouldn't have sacrificed the limited characterization that we get from the Somniel. In fact, it probably would have enhanced it. For those that haven't played the Tellius games, base conversations were pre-chapter conversations that could be with your units, important NPCs, or even just locals in the region. These conversations provide opportunities to get to know characters and learn about the world without any of the chores or tedium that hubs often include. To me, a hub has to either be fun to traverse or provide better world building or character development than base conversations, or I'd rather just have a menu with base conversations. Of the three most recent Fire Emblem hubs, I think the Three Hopes War Camp is the best one. It manages to provide tons of opportunities to get to know characters, while also not being super annoying and time consuming. The Monastery in Three Houses may be time consuming and annoying, especially on subsequent playthroughs, but I would argue these trade-offs are worth it for the character development and support building that we get through the Monastery, although if it were up to me, I definitely would have made it less time consuming and more skippable on subsequent playthroughs. The Somniel is definitely a big mechanical improvement over the Monastery. I won't miss spending 30 minutes per chapter running around doing chores to get my students ready for their education. But it only half fixes the problems. You'll still be spending time in the Somniel every chapter doing things that could have been a menu, but without the characterization that happens in the Monastery. Basically, it is an improvement, but I still wish they would have either included more dialogue and world building, or made more of the options accessible via a menu with no loading times. Or both. Overall, I just hope that if we continue having hubs in the future that they're a little closer to Three Hopes' War Camp, or that we shift back to just doing menus and base conversations instead. Either way would be more preferable to me than the approach that we get in Engage, or the approach that we got in Three Houses. Beyond the hub, I had such a good time on my first Fire Emblem Engage playthrough, and I'm about halfway through my second one on Maddening now. I can't wait to finish it so that I can make future videos on some of the cool ways Engage creates balanced and fair challenges despite giving the player access to a bonkers arsenal of powerful abilities. So if you liked this video and you want to see more content like this in the future, consider hitting the like or subscribe button.